And what you've been showing us, I think, are some of these barriers that stop us from doing this very thing. We either don't think highly enough, or we don't trust enough, or we don't be purposeful enough, or we have our own little distinctions. Are you telling us that we just need to just step out and do this? Yeah, step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. And the water's fine? It's really scary <laughs> stepping out of the boat. I mean, looking at those waves, it's, it's terrifying. It's, it's, I mean, what if, what if Peter was afraid, he couldn't swim? Like, I don't know if he could, he probably could, but like, what if, what if you can't swim and you're, you're supposed to step on this water? It's like this, but that's what he calls us to. That's what faith is because it's in the stepping out that I'm trusting that he is going to carry me and he's going to put the words in my mouth. He's going to give me the soundness of mind. He's going to do whatever I am afraid of that I lack, whatever my weakness is, that becomes a strength if I trust in him. You know, I, I think that our, our weaknesses actually are our greatest strength when we allow him to work in that place because if you know you, it's your weakness, you're not going to think it's you. You're not going to depend on yourself. You're going to be forced to depend on him and that's when he moves. That's when he can move because you're not doing it. You're not like, oh, it's me. Oh, you no, know, you know where your help comes from. So that's why when we do that stepping out, when, that's when we see the greatest things ever happen in our lives. Petey, um, just, I want you to expound on that just a little bit more, and then we have a couple other questions. But I've noticed that your prayers are rather simple. And I think most people, they think when they come up to someone that it needs to be this huge, well-thought-out prayer, maybe a really long prayer. But I, I don't find a whole lot of long prayers within Scripture. I find pretty to the point. And I find that sometimes as a barrier. Many times people say, well, I don't pray as well as so and so or yeah so help us out with that i mean it's, what's that like but see what we're really doing there is we're saying that i'm putting faith in my and how eloquently i can say a bunch of words and a f certain formula and how can i arrange them in a certain way and how i can time it well and that's what makes god move that's really what we're saying we're saying that it's how i say this prayer but like you said uh, what, what does he say hey you i don't have silver and gold but rise and walk that's the extent of it yeah. it wasn't a half hour lord you know and it could be a half hour prayer but but if we're saying it's my half hour prayer that does it then it's the prayer that it's your own work now that you oh, actually wow. are saying is is the thing that makes god move and as or or makes the healing happen instead of actually i have so much trust in the father that if i prayed for three seconds i believe he could do it i don't need to pray that long okay so yeah that's very good that's cool brad can you repeat back to us those things that allow us to experience the Spirit? Maybe the things that do rather than things that don't. I mean, we, we've talked about a lot, lot of things that interfere. Sure. When the disciples came to Yeshua, um, they could have asked him a lot of things to teach them, but they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. It's interesting. And, you know, he did, but... And then they observed him because, and, and you, you have to wonder why did they have that at the forefront? Why teach us how to pray? Because obviously they saw him pray and he was praying like no one else he's, they've ever seen. Uh, we know just from what we know in Gethsemane, Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying all night because there's temptation coming, right? And he's asking them, pray with me, don't fall asleep. And so when uh, they did fall asleep and that's why Peter denied him three times because he didn't pray to get prepared for when that was going to face him. And so I think that, you know, prayer is something that's so, I don't think it's talked about enough. I think that we, we don't, because I know life is busy and all that, and we have family and all, all the stuff that goes along with it. But how much time, I want to ask you as an individual sitting here to ask yourself, how much time do I spend in the closet or your garage or wherever you want to do it outside in the wilderness somewhere <laughs> wherever how how much time do you spend every day getting away from everything just closing the door no one sees anything and you just you just get alone with the father and how how much does that really happen in your in your life um, because if if you don't feel con you, you won't feel confident that he's backing you when you're out in public when you're supposed to be a witness if you haven't 
found that confidence in how He's spoken to you in the private. Because that relationship with Him is a private relationship first and a public relationship second, and it becomes very powerful publicly when there is a real, intimate, private fellowship with the Father. And that's why Yeshua's ministry was what He was. Because He went oftentimes and withdrew Himself from everyone, spent time with the Father alone, so that when He gets in the midst of people, He was going to say the same things that His Father told Him when He was alone with the Father.